Good morning, everybody. Dear friends, the wind is strong. Clothes are hiding the moon, which a few seconds ago was shining down on the waves in the Bay of Sydney. A poor, distressed young soul dressed in a hood and jeans is making her way through the park. Her steps are taking her closer to the cliffs over there behind the trees, the cliffs where so many distressed people have ended their lives over the years. A human voice is suddenly addressing her. Confused, she looks around. An elderly man is sitting there on a bench and asks her if she needs a cup of tea. Tea, now. The sheer surprise of this sudden interference is putting her world upside down. And before she knows it, she is sitting on the bench at the side of the elderly man and in her shivering hands, a warm cup of tea. An elderly man with a flask of hot tea, sitting on a bench overlooking a beautiful but wild and dangerous scenery over the Bay of Sydney. The young girl does not say a word. Tears are running down her cheeks. She drinks her tea. Slowly, a few words are sneaking out. They disappear in the strong wind. The man with the tea flask is listening, nodding his head, but saying nothing. The silence between them starts to be filled with safety, with calm, with normality. Half an hour later, the young girl walks back over the hills towards the city of Sydney. Philip Hare of Sydney YMCA shared this story with me when I visited Australia and the beautiful city of Sydney. This elderly man has passed away, but through many years, he saved hundreds of lives, offering people with no hopes a warm cup of tea. This is a beautiful picture of the YMCA. Friends, I have been longing for this moment because finally I can say thank you to all of you for what is inside my report. What is inside this report is what we did together. And you have all your part in this achievement. Today, my report will speak about the last eight years with a focus on the four years since Estes Park. It was there that we unanimously passed our strategy, which we called our way. Was what a highlight that Rocky Mountain experience was, a moment of joy, a moment of giving, receiving, and experiencing love. We listened to you, and we set out the next day with your marching orders to implement our way. We were going to live our values. You remember yesterday at the opening show, The Three Wheels. You've seen it outside. These wheels are the metaphor for this World Council. Three wheels to be turned in love, to help more young people and to change the world. We made in our staff team three circles on a flip chart, like that illustration. Youth empowerment was the uh, embraced vision for the YMCA now. And therefore, the YMCA had to reach out for all young people and live together with the young people and share the untold story of injustice towards young people. And the obvious outcome of this interaction between YMCA and young people had to be freedom, had to be liberty, had to be a world wide open for young people. And that's why the world needed to be changed to become a friendlier place for young people. Youth empowerment does not mean that the YMCA shall do this to or for the young people. No. Youth empowerment means that we, as a YMCA, are facilitating a platform for young people to empower themselves 
for young people to take what is theirs. This is the real freedom. And diving deeply into this hush reality of the world of today, we started to realize how this story of injustice, the untold story of injustice towards young people worked. There is a story today that seldom gets told. This story doesn't have a dashing hero or a clear, singular villain. It doesn't feel good to watch, and it doesn't always make sense or follow reason or rhyme. It is the story of injustice against the young people of the world. It is the untold story. Today, there are 1.8 billion people between the ages of 10 and 24 in our world. Together, they make up 25% of our global population. 238 million young people survive on less than a dollar a day. 133 million are unable to read and write. 41% of the world's job seekers are young adults. Globally, more than 150 million girls under age 18 have experienced sexual violence. 60 million are sexually assaulted on the way to school each year. In many countries, 90% of children with disabilities do not attend school. Worldwide, 30% of young people living on the streets have a disability. Social media and advertisers create images of lifestyles completely unattainable for most young people, creating frustration and low self-esteem. They are poverty-stricken children with no hope for an education. They are soldiers abandoned after serving their country. They are young women raped in an ethnic cleansing. They are Asman, a young Muslim facing extremist recruiters, gangs and drug peddlers. They are Alina, a young woman living with blindness without the support around her to live. They are Peter, a young man humiliated and ostracized from his community. You saw Asman there. My good friend Asman and the YMCA reached him and he found that a life-saving place. But the YMCA is not always in the position to be close to the young people. And the young people are not organized so that they can be illustrated like a circle. They are no circle. They are disorganized. And there is no teeth in the YMCA circle to in the wheel to connect with the young people. Therefore, we needed to create a new platform where this could happen and bring the YMCA closer to all young people of this world. And the big world, the big wheel, is the difficult place. The world is slippery. It has no teeth. It does not interact easily with the weak and the vulnerable. It's not an easy place to make change. At that moment, we sat back and we said, wow, we really understood how far we needed to go, how wildly ambitious this goal was. And at the same time, it dawned on us that if we really went this way, if we did this, we had the potential to grow to the largest ever civil society organization in the history of mankind because we were aiming for all young people no matter background culture politics identities languages religions or any other divide all young people in my final last speech to the YMCA I want to share with you some of my most precious memories and most valuable moments of my time with the YMCA. The YMCA has given me much more than I have given back. Gold, shining gold. In the YMCA, we don't talk so much about the valuable things of life. We live them. 
Unity is in our DNA. All the time since Paris Basis, we live it. We come together to celebrate friendship and sisterhood and brotherhood and demonstrate to one another that we are friends, that we are partners and working together to empower young people like we are doing this way. In this way, we incarnate the love of God. We make it real. We make it touchable. We make it feelable. And today, it is this picture of love and care, this inspiring, encouraging picture that shall lift us up and teach us again and again what the real strength of the YMCA is, what the miracle of the YMCA is, what the blessing of the YMCA is. In the YMCA, we live the love of God. We live it together and demonstrate in very practical way what unconditional love means. That kind of love that includes all people of all colors and opinions and creeds, non-discriminatory, all-inclusive in a global fellowship of love and mutual respect. It is such a beautiful picture of caring and respecting and including. It is a picture that draws people to it and makes them want to be part of it. And let us today and this week live the YMCA together and lift it up to new heights of inspiration so that we can bring this brilliant picture with us back home and lift it up to all the folks back home. Last time, if you remember, some of you, in Estes Park, we climbed two mountains. Mount Fuji as the mountain of history, of glorious memories from the past as well as learning lessons. Then Mount Kilimanjaro as the symbol of the future, a future of brilliant hopes and expectations. Friends, did we reach our goals, our dreams from Estes Park? Did we see our hopes and expectations become reality? Let us look at some interesting The YMCA figures. is reaching more young people than ever before. The outcome of YMCA's unifying around the brand message, Youth Empowerment, is demonstrated with nearly two-thirds, 64.5%, of all people reached by the YMCA now being young people. This number has increased dramatically by 17% since 2012. That's an increase from 48% to 64%. Importantly, this reach has now grown to 42 million young people worldwide. This is an increase of nearly 14 million young people since 2012. YMCAs are reaching more people than ever before in our 175-year history. Impact on all people has grown in the period by over 7 million people, an increase of 12%. We now directly reach 40 million people each year, plus indirectly 25 million for a total reach of 65 million people each year. This is all great news. The YMCA is serving more people and, more importantly, lots more young people than ever before. This is great news. From 28 to 42 million, we are on our way. Last time we said that injustice towards young people was the problem. We asked young people in the largest ever youth research in 55 countries around the world, one million voices told us about injustice. Injustice towards young people on health issues, on work-related issues, on civic engagement issues, and on environmental issues. It told us about injustice through criminality, and violence. And most of all, young people told us about injustice and not knowing, not being told their own rights. Last time, we said that youth empowerment is the answer to this injustice. We talked about the untold story. We wanted to tell that story. We wanted to give young people a voice. And in the previous eight years, we have implemented two huge global scientific researches on young people, and we aim to continue this work. And tomorrow you will hear the exciting report from One Million Voices 2. 
During the same eight years, we have organized four strategic resource groups on those mentioned areas of health, jobs, civic engagement, and environment. And for the next period, friends, we are suggesting uh, resource group number five, which is called Safe Space. And this is about non-discrimination of young people and about inclusion of all young people. In the previous eight years, we have trained 600, more than 600 change agents from 73 countries all around the world. We are soon to start recruiting cohort number four, and we expect to reach the number of 1,000 change agents. All of this started when we stopped talking and began listening. So let us today again listen to some very serious voices of young people to us. I think that youth, like my age, needs to be supported and needs to be uh, oriented because most of, us doesn't know, don't, most of us don't know what the community needs us to be, what are the needs in the community so that we can work on ourselves and find the right job for the right persons. Suddenly, much emphasis in Ghana has been given to HIV, AIDS, and this, you know, big killer disease. But then my country currently, and like many other African countries, are still suffering from diseases that are being tagged as preventable diseases. These are diseases that just by ensuring simple, good sanitation health checks will be able to save us out of it. But yet, many, many Africans, many, many Ghanaians fall victims, die. Like salaries are very low, uh, low so you cannot uh, be independent. And that's affecting a lot because when you are 25, 26, 27 years old and you cannot move away from your parents because you don't have money. It's not that you want to live with them. It's just that you don't have a, the choice to say, I want to be independent. Racism is still keeping the youth I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis from achieving their full potential. Most of us just don't realize the importance of doing exercise. Like, we're stuck in our rooms or doing study, so most of us just don't do any exercise, which is so bad for our health in the long term. The biggest challenge I face as a young person is lack of opportunities and lack of things that I can get involved in outside of school. So many people go abroad to study and sometimes they don't come back. And it is like a brain leakage from my country. And we don't like that. We want our country to be strong. And we need those uh, Russian brains to be in their country to take care of it. Yeah, because it's sort of this whole mindset of you have to be qualified in something to get a job. But then what they don't tell you is you're qualified. But so is everyone else now because they got told the same thing. And then you need experience. And you don't get experience without already having a job. So um, I feel like. Volunteerism should be um, promoted a lot more in high schools. Would be work-life balance. Yeah, because um, as a young person, transiting from the school life, student life, to work life uh, is a very big transition. So uh, there's a lot of things to adjust to uh, at work. So with the amazing amount of information that's coming all the time, uh, it's kind of difficult to balance between family, relationships and work at the same time. Our country is a little bit, um, actually a lot polluted um, in many ways, like the air is polluted and uh, the, the, the rivers and uh, most of the streets you have rubbish everywhere. And one big injustice is mental illness. That's a huge issue in Sweden right now. Many, it's self-harm and suicide rate is going up. And that's horrible and horrifying in so many ways. Uh, in my country, it's really something that happens a lot, that young people are given uh, responsibility at very tender edges, where they're supposed to be in school, to be empowered, to get more skills, they're given responsibility to take care of their families, you know. Education, lack of education, you know, that right they need to education is not being offered freely to them. It's something that, it's more like they're just robbing their childhood and their right to education is just being robbed away like that. Change. Together with these young people, we wanted change, because change is beautiful. Change is exciting. Change is difficult and hard, 
and change is full of pain. Change means to leave something behind, leave it to itself and to stretch into the future and embrace what is new and unknown. It is painful to let go and it is full of anxiety and fear to embrace the new. Angst is a word full of Freud and the entire subconscious. Angst is probably more German than English, but it is a word that gives me the reality of change, all the insecurity, the feeling of not being safe, not living under a guarantee, the uncomfortable feeling of not having a safety net underneath you. When we dealt with this in our staff team, we called it something else. And maybe that is more easy to understand than the word angst related to change. We said, this is like building a plane at the same time as you're flying it. And uh, can you see that reality? Building a plane and flying it at the same time, adding a wing and adding an engine and maybe a propeller. If anything was like, learning by doing <laughs> that is and if any project in the history of YMCA was risky that was one my point is that you cannot change and feel totally comfortable you have to leave your comfort zone and reach for the unknown and untried we wanted to change the YMCA from the inside we did not want to go outside to find some kind of new and interesting identity we wanted to go deep inside and find an old identity and renew it, modernize it, refresh it, make it shine. We went back to Fuji, to the mountain of history, to find strength and inspiration to climb the mountain of the future, Kilimanjaro. We looked back to be able to stretch ourselves into a new, an unknown future. These are the original glasses of George Williams. They work. <laughs> George had bigger ears than I. I'm looking through the glasses of George Williams, and I'm seeing the misery of young people coming from the countryside into the streets of London in the middle of the Industrial Revolution. I see the loneliness and the poverty and the hopelessness and the fear and anxiety of young people. I see the everlasting and ever untold story of injustice towards young people. Looking through these glasses, the images of young people filled the mind and the heart of George Williams and inspired him to act. What came through these glasses made his leg walk and his arms stretching out to embrace the young people, to help the young people, to help the young people building character and values and ideals and a future. In short, what came through these glasses made George William empower young people in London back in 1844. I was using these glasses and I was looking back in history, all the way back to old George. In some ways, it was like walking in George Williams' shoes, seeing the same things as George Williams saw, feeling the same emotions George Williams was feeling, tasting the same inspiration George Williams was feeding from. George Williams was driven by the un unconditional love of God. The calling he had heard from his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, motivated him. He was called to go into the streets of London 
and dealing with, caring for the runaway lambs from the English countryside, the innocent children of a dramatically changing society. The more I used the glasses of George Williams, the more I saw through the filters of history and saw the realities of our times, the streets and the stress and dangers and temptations of our times, the poverty and loneliness and hopelessness of our time. And without removing George Williams' glasses, I looked into the internet, the jungle of information and evilness of our time, the merciless exploitation of the weak and the defenseless, the unethical abuse of young people to steal their dignity, to exploit their beauty, to undermine their faith in the future, to pervert their ideals, and to scare them to silence and obedience under merciless laws of greed and power. The everlasting and never told story of injustice towards young people. And still, with George Williams' glasses on my eyes, I started to feel the deep anger of seeing all the abuse of young people, the incredible frustration by seeing how we failed them over and over again. From anger and frustration, the glasses of George Williams led me to a passionate solidarity with those young people. I could see through the old glasses. They are not the children from 1844. They are the young people of 2018, the young people of today. There are many, many more of them today than back in 1844. I see many more young people than what George Williams ever saw. In my time, I'm surrounded by 1.8 billion young people. And like George Williams, I want the YMCA to embrace all of them, and not only 2% like today. technical problems with the glasses of George Williams. For everyone, all these young people who gets hope back in their lives, for every young person who feels surrounded by love in state, in, in, instead of hate, and aggressive abuse. The world is becoming a more beautiful place. And that is why change is beautiful. You can borrow the glasses of George Williams, and you can see the beauty of change as he saw it when he created the YMCA back in 1844. You can use those glasses and see the beauty of change that we have experienced in the World YMCA in 2018. Change is an art of love. Change moves us from institution to movement again. And when we started our two, four years periods of work in this wonderful World Alliance of YMCAs back in 2010, we looked inside the YMCA to find the old identity, what was created by George Williams and his friends, and we wanted to modernize it and let it shine, and we called it youth empowerment. And as George Williams and his comrades were all under 25 years of age, we looked for the same kind of leaders of the same kind of age. And we created the plan for change agents, probably the most exciting and promising youth leadership program since 1844. And we called them change agents. And we called them to be the change, to share the vision, and to inspire action. It was a journey over five years, starting in Prague at the YMCA Europe Youth Festival back in 2013 then going to Estes Park in 2014 and leading that World Council to new heights of youth participation and youth leadership. 
It was a journey going on to Southeast Asia in 2015 on the peace boat to Japan, Philippines, and Singapore. And it continued to where we are now in 2016, Chiang Mai, where we, by the way, got the idea to take the whole World Council here. The journey went to the west coast of Portugal and then back again to Chiang Mai, and here we are, 2018. I can tell you it has been a journey of change and development of youth leadership and youth empowerment. And for me, it has been a wonderful travel, the most learning and touching travel I've ever been to. And I see hundreds of faces that touched my life and touched the life of YMCAs in hundreds, if not thousands, of local YMCA situations. Through these change agents, the YMCA worldwide will continue to change and develop and grow. Through these young people, we will reach more young people, more different kinds of young people. And because of them, we will touch the lives of thousands of people, millions of more young people, and they will have hope re-entering their lives. Look at them. It was a great experience. Before I go on to the next step of my report, I want to say thank you to a very special group of people. They have responsibilities for every little part of what happened these eight years, and that's my staff team. I shall not make a long speech to you now. That time will come later. Your names are deeply inside my heart. You carried me when I needed it. You inspired me and helped me see new horizons out there and your willingness to fight for the YMCA and your love for the YMCA is outstanding. 
and the fellowship that we have had through these eight years have been carrying all these visions and made us happy. Thank you. I'm also very proud that one of my staff members, and I call him my brother from another mother, Carlos Sanve. I have to say that before because we have slightly different colors. <laughs> my brother from another mother, Carlos Sanve, my dear friend and brother, he is my follower in this position. And Carlos, I shall continue to carry you in my prayers and support you in all ways possible. God bless you. Thank you, team. Thank you, Claude Olin, Susanne, Alexandra, Marie Chris, Misha, Aidy, Lisa, Selma, Carlos, Homolo, Joss, Andrew, and Mihao. And I have to tell you, friends, I'm also so proud. My dear friend and colleague, Joss Varghese, has recently been appointed, been appointed the new Secretary General of Wiseman International. And while I'm saying thank you, this also goes to Peter, our president, members of the executive committee and members of the global staff team. Peter and I have worked for more than 25 years. And through our years together in Europe, we made some big projects together, didn't we, Peter? The second YMCA Youth Festival and the inauguration of the YMCA Europe Training Center. We were working together as brothers. All of this prepared the ongoing youth empowerment work we now see at the World Alliance level. And to serve this vision, Peter has traveled the world and inspired many local and national YMCA's with a good message about the YMCA and youth empowerment. Thank you for your dedicated service, Peter. In the years gone by, we have restarted the rich refugee work. And uh, yesterday I met Jim Thompson, my good friend from Scotland, and I want to highlight him. He's a wonderful person. He's 95 years old and he's here. And you know why he is here? He said, I've been to seven. World Councils and the one in Estes Park stood out because of the youth leadership and the youth voices. And I will come back to Chiang Mai to see this youth leadership blossom and grow. This is uh, the voice of a true YMCA hero. And he was the man who led our refugee work many years ago. We have gained a higher profile friends. We have given speeches at the United Nations in New York, and we have traveled from the Vatican to Monaco, from Davos to Washington, and expanded our relationships and partnerships and won more visibility, as we talked about in 2010 in Hong Kong. And some of all these new partners are with us today, and I'm happy to again introduce the famous Harlem Globetrotters. The Harlem Globetrotters are proud to be global ambassadors for basketball for the YMCA. Not only did they invent basketball all the way back in 1891, they used it to serve and empower young people from all over the world. So let's head down to the YMCA and play some basketball. Yeah! Yeah! Ambassadors for the YMCA in basketball, fantastic. I met Howard Smith, the CEO and president of Harlem Globetrotters of all places in the Vatican, in the presence of the Pope. We were together for a conference on sports and faith. And now we are friends and partners. Now to the national general secretaries. Climbing to the top of Machu Picchu, Visiting the pyramids of the sun and the moon in Truillo, Peru. Walking along the seaside in Valparaiso and Viña del Mar. Talking with the stone gods of Rapa Nui, the Muais of Easter Island. And climbing the mountains of Ecuador. 
visiting the enormous temples of Cambodia and seeing the sun rise over Mount Fuji, dancing with giraffes in Kenya and playing with elephants in Tanzania, visiting the most fascinating prison wives here in Togo, and walking through the deepest jungle of Nicaragua in search of the next YMCA agricultural center. Visiting the parliament of Portugal and walking through the container YMCA's of Haiti together with my close friend Gwen Ail. Seeing 1,200 YMCA people scattered around the Rocky Mountains on World Council excursions and being with 20 young people in the YMCA chicken club in the Madagascar to learn how to better run a chicken farm. National general secretaries of our YMCA's have taken me to all those places and many, many more. I've learned about their cultures and natural wonders. I've seen the beauty of their lands and the inside of their YMCA's. It has been a wonderful travel through beauty and wonder. But first of all, it has been a travel in friendship. All these medium and small size YMCA's are growing and blossoming, and they are fulfilling their mission in serving their people and creating beautiful change. And let's have a little glimpse into our different national movements as they were doing the World Challenge this summer. Let's run. MCA and welcome to Geneva. Equally important as the change agents have been for my eight years in working for the World Alliance have been the national general secretaries and the work with them. Without the national movement strongly engaged, we are not able to create any real change. Without them in full collaboration, we cannot make much progress or growth. That is why from the very outset, we looked for opportunities to bring them together and create a fellowship and a working collaboration every year. And the, the travel started in Dunford House in England where we first saw the glasses of George Williams lent to us by Ken Montgomery. Then it went to uh, Kassel, Germany, and then to Estes Park, and then via Camp Rosario in Mexico. And then we went in 2016 to Tanzania, and no, to, to Chiang Mai, and then in 17 to Tanzania at the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro. And in 2018, we climbed to the top of the Swiss Alps in Lausanne and had a real mountaintop experience. Dear National General Secretaries, you have lonely jobs and you have a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. And I want to give thanks to you today, very personal thanks from another General Secretary who also has a lonely job. Thank you for all what you did these last years to change the YMCA. Without you, the giant would still be asleep. Thank you for friendship and solidarity, for the honest sharing of wisdom and alternative ways. 
Thank you for the deep love you have for the YMCA. God bless you. And on Thursday, dear friends, all these national general secretaries from all around the world of YMCA will take this stage and share with us their common journey through youth empowerment. Something to look forward to. Together with these national secretaries, we worked on strategy, property development, research projects, world challenge, whatever we have done. And there is one project that we worked hard on, and I want to highlight that for a couple of minutes. And this is what we call safe space. The Swedish YWCA YMCA put forward a resolution in 2014 about inclusion and non-discrimination of young people. In good and close collaboration with the Swedish movement, we prepared the safe space process, which is a working group of people from all around this diverse movement with all different kinds of opinions and backgrounds. And I can tell you that four years in that working group has been a unique and fantastic travel through personal development and growth and learning from one another and learning what mutual respect means. We talked about the most difficult challenges of the YMCA the intricate, difficult, intimate things. And we deeply disagreed with one another. And still we were able to work in love and mutual respect. And one of the greatest miracles I have experienced in my life was that Sunday morning in Geneva, in our office in 2016, when the group was together and we had worked on the value statement for inclusion. And we had formulated something and we gave it to the group, and I looked around the room. All hands were raised in agreement. It was a moment of God speaking to us. What brought us together, I believe, is the unconditional love of Jesus Christ to all people, us included. And none of us wanted anyone to be discriminated or excluded from that unconditional love. And at the same time, we continued saying that those who could not agree with all of this will have the time they need to continue to work with these matters and come to the conclusion they feel right. And then we brought this issue to the national general secretaries. And we had a very respectful conversation in a big plenary with more than 60 people mutual respect. We shared about problems with these issues that some of our countries had constitutions and laws that made some of it illegal, of traditions that made it difficult. I did not know where we would end that day. It was a Wednesday in Tanzania at the foot of the mountain that I use as a metaphor for the mountain of future, Kilimanjaro, under the burning African sun, I asked the plenary, what about this report from the safe group, safe space group, and the value statement on inclusion? If you add one sentence to it, saying that no movement will be forced to sign anything if they don't feel comfortable with it and agree with it. Can we then put it forward to the World Council in Chiang Mai with our recommendation? A silence fell over the room. And it was a good silence. And I looked around the circle of these wonderful YMCA leaders. And I saw only heads nodding in agreement. A unanimous yes. And the feeling of fellowship and sisterhood and brotherhood was amazing. And again, it was a moment of God speaking to us. This YMCA is changing, changing for good. This World Council has the largest youth representation ever. And I hope it has the largest youth leadership ever. 
There is no fake side meetings. There is no isolation into youth groups. We are all together, working together, leading together, learning, joining hands in hands. We are changing. And we have been told by young people what is important for them. And so it must be important for us. The need is urgent. The tears are real. You remember the girl from Sydney? There are many, many like her. The cries are loud and the mountain called injustice is real. Listen to these messages and they are messages from young people to us today. Oh man, <laughs> we can do it. I want to tell every single YMCA that it, we are all at one organization, that if we help each other, we can make a big splash. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for giving us the opportunity to keep going, keep growing. And thank you for giving us a voice and for let us believe in ourselves. Yeah, same as Maria. Thank you. Thank you so much yeah, for giving us a platform to share and listen to other stories. Without YMCA, I don't know where I, went, where I am now. As a young person, what I'd say to the YMCA's of the world is you're doing a lot, but we need more. Keep going together. We, um, we aren't united. And if we do unite, then we can have a better message. Yeah, it's, it's excellent work that YMCA is doing because it's, it's so locally funded. Um, whereas ma many other organizations work uh, maybe a lot uh, more politically. And YMCA, what I like about the YMCA is that it's it's so much hand-to-hand -hand work, uh, like they really touch the people in the communities. And they really, you can really see the difference that they're making uh, in the communities. Um, yeah, so they're all, uh, every one of them is doing a great job. Let's get united, guys. I love your friends. We're stronger together. We just stay together. There's no chance to be separated, not even one minute. Make sure you are part of the global YMCA, not just a standalone thing, because it's, it's never going to work. You're always stronger when you have people behind you and beside you. We can work towards injustices together, but we need to stay strong and we need to um, cooperate and listen to each other uh, to face the challenges that young people are um, living in today. Yeah, connected. We need that global connected together to be like a movement, not just local YMCA's uh, individuals. No, no, we need a great, powerful movement uh, to get bigger and bigger and be like the YMCA that I measure. beautiful message. The last words of my speech is about joy. John Casey was one of my predecessors and he served the World Alliance of YMCA as a Secretary General from 1991 to 1998. We met first time at the meeting in Geneva in 1994 and he became my close friend in the last years of his life. He passed away last year. And we shared some years of rather intense communication. It's a great feeling to talk to another guy who has been sitting in the same chair as me. We are not many. And had faced the same challenges as myself. We laughed and joked. We shared the same anger and disappointments. And we even shared deep going hurts and pain. But we also shared the joy of youth leadership and promising YMCA leaders around us, young leaders. I'm deeply grateful to John for his friendship and support. He was a pillar of support for me. John stands out in the history of the YMCA. And our thanks go to the Lord above for the life and service to the YMCA by John Casey. At the turn of the year in 2016, yeah, I'll give him a hand. I know that many of you remember dear John. At the turn of the year 2016, he wrote to me as a conclusion to a lot of things we had shared. 
Johan, it's a new year, so rev up your engines and plow forward. Go on. Use your energy. Joy. This immense joy I felt when I left the office late afternoon or early evening after a full day of work. It was such a surprise to me. I had thought that the work as Secretary General would be very difficult and full of conflicts and political fighting, dark and gloomy or gray and uninspiring. Instead, I was overwhelmed with joy. Day after day, full of good, solid work together with people I loved. The joy was pumping through my system. Travel to all corners of the world, joy. The strength of the emotions, the power of the inspiration. Walking through the slum in Phnom Penh together with Buntok Det and seeing the school kids of the slum in YMCA uniforms. Climbing to, to the top of Valparaiso at the coast of Chile and having lunch with the poorest of the poor, hosted by Oscar Ordnes, my very close friend. Visiting Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam and being invited to a private family celebration of Chinese New Year by Van Lok Lu, something unheard of in normal life. What hospitality for Ingun and myself. And traveling from Yangon to Nepidao in Myanmar with Mong Mong and President Ta Sai, receiving beautiful gifts with the strict order, just put it in your bag. Walking through the jungle of Nicaragua with Carlos Amador to visit the YMCA farmer with his family, the proudest family I've ever seen, growing vegetables and fruits on a small YMCA piece of land and creating independent life for themselves, kick-started by the YMCA in Nicaragua. Sailing on the mighty peace boat with my friend Tatsuya Yoshioka-san, sharing the bridge of the ship with my friend Captain Anderson from Arvika in Sweden, and sailing into port in Cebu City in the Philippines, and being received by Pablito Tabucol, pubs with roasted pigs and fresh mangoes, unforgettable. 150 change agents feeding street kids in the early morning and experiencing radical poverty for the first time in their lives, life-changing. 3,000 school kids in uniforms greeting us with the village people song YMCA. Going with Christian Kamara from the president of the country to the slum in Freetown, Sierra Leone and being treated by the leaders of the slum in better ways than in the palace of the president just because we were the YMCA. Two years after the tsunami, we visited Sendai YMCA together with Shigeru Shimada-san in Japan. And to see what we saw, the remnants of school buildings and large houses standing upside down, and listening to the stories of the survivors made us cry. At the same time, we learned about the heroic work of the YMCA staff and volunteers in saving lives and helping to rebuild both people and properties. Always the same. YMCA in the center of action, giving out blankets and handing out rice and clean water at the seaside in Sendai with Shigeru, climbing the mountains of Nepal after the earthquake with Mukti Acharya, or visiting the Bedouins in the desert outside Bethlehem together with André Batarse. Once we were standing outside the cave and the, sand, cave and the sand was blowing around our feet, and I looked down and I found a couple of small, colorful pieces of mosaic. We were standing on top of an undiscovered early church in the desert outside Bethlehem. I could go on for a long time. My Blue Music blog is full of these stories from a long journey, an eight-year travel through the world of YMCA's, a travel I shall never forget. The intensity of the hopes, they filled my heart and my brain and my guts. Traveling all these small, 
YMCA's, I became overwhelmed with hope and inspiration. Not hopes for big donor queuing outside my door. Not hopes for the big movements increasing their fair share. No, not at all. My hopes were much more realistic and down to earth and future oriented. When I left my office in the evening, my heart was full of hope for the small and medium sized YMCAs, the Haitis, the Cambodians, the Myanmar's, the Sierra Leones, the Romanians, the Belarusian, the Ecuadorians, the Nicaraguans, the Togolese, the Kenyans, the Nepalese, the Philippines, the Peruvians, the Cameroonians. I do not want to stop because I've visited all those countries and many more. A long list of heartwarming pictures of change. No, huge portraits of change. Of movements taking their seats around the table. Movements gaining in strength and self-confidence. Movements getting a voice, a say. Movements growing in real influence. The whole movement stretching their arms and legs. A giant waking up. This is movement strengthening par excellence. This is the blue music of the YMCA that I have talked about many times. The blue music of change, the good change, the symphony of a larger and larger orchestra playing together, creating a concert of unheard beauty and force, a music so powerful that it goes to the far ends of the world, into the jungle of Myanmar and to the mountaintops of Nepal through the large cities of Brazil and down the broad valleys of California, along the volcanoes of Iceland and all the way to Easter Island, Rapa Nui in the Pacific Ocean. The music of the YMCA, the music of hope, the music of change, the music of love, the music of God's unconditional love. God bless you.